Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got a different video. It's gonna be kind of a food tutorial. So let's just get straight ahead. We're gonna be making some pizza pinwheels. Now I haven't got a cameraman with me today, so I've got my tripod doing the job for me. So the shots are not gonna be as exquisite as they normally are, but I'll try and do the best I can in post-processing to try and make this look super awesome. But um, we're just gonna get going. So some things you're gonna need. First of all, you're gonna need Rolling pin, one spoon, cheese grater, for fun. You'll need a plate. Super sharp knife. Don't test it on yourself because you might cut yourself. Tomato puree. You also need an onion. You need some cheese. We always need some cheese. Am I gonna get in trouble for product placement on that one? I don't know, let's we'll stick it there. And then we need some pastry. Now I've got this one here. Uh, let's put it there. It's a dress roll pastry, uh, puff pastry. It's, got, it's important that it's puff pastry and not just normal shortbread or short crust pastry, otherwise it won't work. We need some cling film, put him in there. Some flour, now it doesn't matter, I'll put that there. It doesn't matter if that's uh, self-raising or plain, because we're not gonna actually be putting that in anything, that's just gonna be used to um, stop things from sticking. Get that out of the way. We're gonna start with the onion. So we need to chop this up, chop this bad boy up. So what you need to do, don't worry about taking the skin off because we'll do that afterwards. But chop off the end without the root first. Oh, I, I did say sharp knife, didn't I? Well, even if you have a blunt knife, just press a bit harder. There we go. Take off the top, you can use that as a hat later on if you want. And then, take off these bits, we don't need those. And cut, just down the middle, like that. Now you should probably be using a chopping board if you live at home with your parents. Uh, this is my own place, I can do whatever the fudge I want. Now I'm just gonna peel off these top layers, we don't need this. All we need is the stuff at the bottom. Stuff on the inside. So once you've got that done, let's just get this crap out of the way. Once you've got all that done, onions. Once you've got all that done, you're going to want to just finely chop all of these up. Be careful not to cut your fingers off because if your finger goes into the food, it won't taste as good. Oh, <laughs> doesn't matter kind of how you chop them, as long as they're really finely chopped, then that's all good. The same with this one over here. Now if you're a little pussy, you'll probably start crying. Best thing to do is just to man up. Now what we've got to do is time lapse this because this usually takes a while. We just need to chop these up as finely as possible. I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm crying. Oh, my eyes. <coughs> Jesus Christ. Ah. Oh. Ooh. God, that was a sad story that I just read. Okay, so once you've got that done, push that aside, we don't need that for a minute. That's all go over there. Now, I did clean this counter top down before I started, so it is clean and you probably wanna do that yourself as well. Otherwise you'll get diseased. Next thing now is to just give it a quick wipe. We'll do that real quick just to get rid of all that. Now we'll bring on the flour. So all you need to do with this, just sprinkle some down like that. That's probably way too much. Mix it up a bit. I've just got the onions in the flour, that was stupid. Get your pastry. Open this up like a total beast. Now for the purpose of this, I'm not going to use the whole block. I'm just going to use, let's get rid of that rubbish. Going to use about half. 
don't do this because you will lose your hand. But we already found out that this knife is pretty blunt. Oh, look at that. Okay, so you can put that aside, wrap that up later. Now, with the puff pastry, the more layers, the better. So I normally just chop it in half, put them on top of each other, squeeze them down. Now we've got double layers, which you're gonna do, YouTube. Stick it down there, stick it down. Just kind of flour it up as much as you can. And that's all set up. Now we wanna roll this out. Now, ideally, we wanna roll this into a rectangular shape. And this will make it work a lot easier. Let's get our rolling pin out. Just grab some of the flour you got, put it on top of there, and start rolling. And every one or two rolls, just flip it over. Just keep the flour, keep it covered in flour for as long as possible. And like I said, we're gonna be making a rectangular shape. So just keep pushing harder one side. If it starts to stick to your rolling pin, don't worry. Just take it off carefully and add a bit more flour. But like I said, the plan for this really is just to keep it in a, a similar to a rectangular shape. It's not gonna be perfect and it doesn't matter if it's perfect. That's the art or the beauty of this is, it really doesn't have to be perfect, this, this particular part here. You can be as messy as you want making this. And when you get to maybe a quarter of a centimetre thick, that's kind of when you want to start to stop, or maybe even a little bit less than that. Um, you want it to be soft, but still relatively firm. Now what you want to do is just kind of push out these edges a little bit, because it needs to be fairly wide as well. So once you've done that, then that's the hard part done. So you just pick it up. I normally just push this stuff out of the way because we don't need this anymore. Chuck it over there, chuck this down. Now here, let's give it a good shake. You can handle this reasonably hard. It doesn't matter if there's a hole in there, that just means you're doing a really good job. Okay, so next job here is get your tomato puree. <coughs> Take the lid off, get your spoon and just do whatever you want, stick it on there, however you want. And you want to get this spread out with the end of the spoon as equally as you can. You start doing this with your spoon, back and forth motion, uh, and tilting the spoon as well, just to kind of get it even spread. I'm going to pretend that I know exactly what I'm talking about, but to be honest, I don't. Winging it all day long. Now, again, this doesn't need to be tidy. This can be as messy as you want because it's homemade and homemade stuff always looks like <laughs> but tastes really good. If you feel like you haven't got enough, just whack some more on. Put some more there. And just spread it around until you've got it the way you want it. And the reason I'm doing this so messily is just to show you that you don't need to be a professional. You don't need to really know what you're doing at all. As long as you've got somebody to help you with the oven, then this is easy. Probably the easiest thing, easier than beans on toast. Well, probably not, but that's not the point. Not the point. Okay, so I think we're good. Got a fairly even spread. If you feel like you've got too much on one side, scoop some off. A little bit over there, like that. Now, I've done this in the wrong order. We probably need to grate the cheese first, so I'm just gonna do that really, really quickly. A block of cheese. Alright, doesn't actually matter what cheese you use for this, you can use any cheese that you prefer. Now all we do, sprinkle her on top, 
and just make sure you're kind of covering it like you would a pizza. So at the moment we're making essentially a puff pastry pizza, but that will change it. I mean, you could probably bake it like this if you want, just make a pizza, stick all your toppings on, whack it in the oven for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Totally up to you. But the secret to this is just to get it spread out as finely as possible. You don't want any big clumps if you can help it. Doesn't matter if there's a few. Just get it all spread out and get that chunk out of the way. That's probably good, I would say. And then you get your onion. Chuck it on there. Doesn't matter how. Again, as long as it's nice and equally spread out. So we just spread that out like that. Now the next bit is super fun. You're going to slap it like you mean it. So just slap down and you'll want to flatten everything down into the pastry as much as you can. If you do it too hard it will stick to your hand, but that's pretty much it. Oh god, look at that, that's nasty. If you get dirty hands, just wipe them down your top because your mum will clean your clothes later on. If she questions it, just tell her to get out of my room, I'm playing Minecraft. Last bit. And this is one of the hardest bits. You just want to flip the edge over like that. And then just keep doing that until you have a nice big thing that doesn't look rude. You keep doing this until you have a nice big tube of all the ingredients. Like that. Now the hardest bit here is sealing it. But all we do, whack out some of the cling film Put that over there for a minute. You just need to get a big stream with it. This is getting messy way too quickly. Oh no. I can never open this stuff. Never. All right, we're good, we're good. Now make it just a little bit longer than that. Uh, don't, ooh, don't have anything to cut this with, so I'm just gonna use a karate chop. That's how it's done. Stick this on top. Nope, stick it to the end, to the edge like that. And you wanna gently wrap it up. Now this is another important bit, you have to do this. If you miss this stage out, then it's gonna come out really, really badly. But all you do, wrap it up like a sweet, just the ends, or fold the ends, doesn't matter how you do it. And then just roll it out like you're making a sausage. I mean, it's already a sausage, but what we're doing here is we're compacting everything, all the ingredients, we're pushing them all together to make sure that this doesn't undo itself midway. And if you want it to be a bit longer, you can just kind of pull it a little bit like that. Just try and keep it in its circular shape. Now, step one is done. Now this here kind of looks like a giant sausage, doesn't it? This goes in the fridge for about 20 to 25 minutes, so you can harden up everything, uh, so it's nice and firm. So we're gonna do that right now, that's gonna go into the fridge. And we'll be back in 20 minutes, once I've tidied up. And we're back, guys, with that. That's been in the fridge for about half an hour, 30 minutes, so now we can unroll it. Just like that. Now it's a lot firmer now, we do have a little hole there, but it doesn't matter. All we do now, pick up a sharp knife, this one's actually sharp, so I'm going to be careful with this one, and I've got a baking tray over here, I should probably come around there so it's easier for me to actually cut, like that, no, like that, oh the camera can't see, let's try like that, there we go, there we go. And all we need to do is just cut it into thin strips, like that, about maybe a centimeter to a centimeter and a half. Don't worry if they squash, that doesn't matter too much at the moment. And it doesn't matter if they look a bit messy, because like I said before, it's homemade, it's allowed to look messy, so it doesn't matter. Let's push those over there. Cut some more of these, and it doesn't really matter what size you cut these. You can cut these smaller for smaller bite sizes to get extra, or you can cut them a lot thicker if you want. It just means that you will have to just, you will have to. It, I can't speak. It just means you'll have to just, you just, it just means you will have to adjust your cooking time accordingly. 
Uh, that's all we do now. Kind of reshape them, get them back into their circle form. Like that, any way you want. And just before doing this, you want to preheat your oven to about 190 degrees. Uh, now I'm in the UK, so if you're in the States, it's going to be different for you. I do have a fan assisted oven. So that's on at the moment, heating up. And if you've done too many, then you're going to have to get another pan out, or another tray out to make some space. But because I can't be bothered, I'm just going to compress them all in a bit more like that and make sure they fit. There we go. That should just about work. Ah. You do want these to have a little bit of space in between because they will expand, they get bigger. So try to keep more space than that. That, that, that. Now all you need to do, put those in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. You will know when they're done because they will look done. It's as simple as that. Uh, they can burn a little bit, it doesn't matter, there's cheese on top so that melts quite nicely. And um, when they're a nice sort of puffy texture, slightly browned on top, you're good to go. So I'm going to stick that in the oven right now and we'll be back once that's done. There we go guys, perfectly made pizza pinwheels. Now what do you do with these now, you might ask. Well first off, you're going to have a problem taking them off, because they get very stuck. So you're going to need a sharp object, like a knife, I won't use this one because it's not clean, but you just hold the paper up and cut underneath, and then put them into a container of your choice, and they're ready to serve up as soon as they've cooled down, or you can stick them in the fridge, you can use them the next day if you're going to a party, or if it's Christmas, or if you just want a snack. It's as simple as that guys. So if you enjoyed the video, please, 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 please don't forget to drop a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying what you're seeing. Drop a comment down below just to let me know what you thought of this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye.